Show. Hello and welcome back to the 10 Minute Turbo Show. I am kneeling behind a gigantic box from Japan. This thing is huge! So um, I'm going to unbox it and I hope you enjoy this. Now, I like importing stuff from Japan uh, a lot and uh, the usual things I import are things like games and uh, you know when you're importing a game you wait a sort of couple of weeks you pay about 10 quid uh, maximum postage and it arrives, you rip it open and uh, you stick it in your games console. Well, I've had to wait a little bit longer for this. I've not had to wait four months like some people do when they're importing via sea mail. I have had to wait about three weeks, mainly because it's got held up in customs in Coventry, which um, I'm sure Gary Stardust would have something to say. Um, but it was held up in customs because obviously they were doing a customs check. It doesn't look like they've opened it up, but they did charge me some VAT on it, which came to about uh, £45, which I'm not, I was a bit annoyed about first, but then when I realised, um, you know, it could have been much worse. They could have put customs duty on it, even though game accessories generally don't attract uh, customs duty, but the VAT was reasonable considering the price I paid for the actual um, item and um, it's an item that I've been after for a long time. It's an item that will help me in my quest for the ultimate gaming setup. Okay, well, whatever's, whatever he's done, he's done this extremely thoroughly because we've got two boxes here. We've got box in a box. So. This is the first package I've imported where I've actually been interested in a bureaucracy that came with parcel A, the uh, HM Customs invoice and the, um, the shipping information. I found all of this very interesting purely because um, I was waiting to open it. So, we're getting close now. You can see the item resting inside. I shall not be needing this improvised pen knife anymore. Okay, let's have a look. There's the logo. Oh yeah, let me see what it is yet. Okay. Second box out of the way. We have got the Sega Saturn Virtuistic Pro. HSS0130 two player arcade stick based on the Astro City arcade mould and this is complete boxed uh, it's just got some bubble wrap around it at the moment you can see there nice Japanese packaging lovely uh, illustrations as you expect that transpires that I do still need the, uh, the pen knife to get through this final there. And it does look absolutely gorgeous just from the box. You can see there's a ding in the box. <laughs> ding, it feels like there's two dings in the box where the, um, where the balls of the joysticks have protruded through in some unfortunate shipping, shipping accident. You can see ding one and ding two there and there. A couple of lumps. I wonder what the customs people thought this was. Entering this entering this country. I'd like to actually dedicate this unboxing to HM Customs. Who um you do a fantastic job um, protecting our our borders from uh, the import of dangerous and illicit goods and protecting the people of England against counterfeit ow fuck, stab my finger okay so we got the box now I wasn't a little blood on my finger now that's good isn't it 
Um, I'm not going to touch the box with blood on my fingers, so I'm going to wash my hands first and then carry on unboxing. Alright, so here it is, uh, the Saturn Virtua Stick Pro. The two-player version of the Virtua Stick, um, which I know uh, several of you do own. So yeah, it was um, released as a kind of luxury periphery for the Sega Saturn, um, with its uh, impressive arsenal of fighting games arcade games and shooters and uh, way back in 1994 right at the time this was released this was considered one of the best uh, peripheries for the system along with the disk drive and uh, there we go, along with the disk drive so I'm just going to take it out of the box now as you can see, the box is not exactly pristine, um, but considering how big it is, you know, and these aren't new, uh, they're 20 odd years old, um, the fact that the boxes exist at all, you know, it's probably been looked after reasonably well, you know, that's the best bit, isn't it? The good old photo of the, uh, of the joystick itself, and that's in good nick. I also love the sort of variegated scan line style packaging. A lot you get on so many of the NEC products, and there's even a little Sega logo in the corner. So so far so good. Um, like I say, there's some quite unpleasant little dings on the front uh, there and there where the knobs have protruded. You can see that. <coughs> so here we go. Let's uh, open him up. And uh, I always like to take a bit of a bit of a sniff. In, uh, in these boxes when I get a new console. So here goes. It's uh, 19, 1980s attic smell. Yeah, definitely a dusky smell in there. Not the smell of um, burnt electronics that you sometimes get with these retro consoles. So I'm going to flip them over carefully now so as to not rip the cardboard. Okay, that's the first time. Go. Let's move that away from there. So this is the joystick. Um, I'll just uh, comment on the rest of the contents. It is complete. Um, so it comes with three move strips that can be inserted into the joystick. This one is completely enough. It's Virtua Fighter Kids. Uh, the second one is Virtua Fighter 2. I actually own this game, so um, that's that's good. And the third is Fighting Vipers, which I don't own, and they're all uh, AM2 games, the legendary Yu Suzuki's game production house. Um, interesting. Comes with extremely bizarre. Oh no, the move strips, that's the move strip bag. I thought that was something else. Back in the bag. Also comes with instructions like so uh, and it's a single piece of paper with uh, some kind of reg, reg card uh, it's obviously fairly basic it just tells you this is the joystick plug it in get the fuck on with it now what's already apparent which is extremely good news for me is that this will fit inside my um, cupboard the cupboard which I use for my um, gaming. It can only one with banging off in it. Um, I hadn't taken any measurements of this item, although I know how big my cupboard is, and it's the same, roughly the same size as the storage space where I'm going to keep it. So, so if it's less than 87 centimetres wide, it will be fine. So this is it, and. Uh, Extremely nicely built, it's in good nick, just needs a little bit of a clean, a little bit of a wipe with a cloth, absolutely superb. Um, so time for some close ups. Thank you. 
Virtua Stick Pro was a Japan-only accessory for the Sega Saturn. It retailed for five hundred dollars. That's forty thousand yen. It featured four MS32 Sumitsu arcade knobs and Sega arcade buttons, which can be modded out with Sanwa parts. You can also open the control panel out and hook it up to some PCBs to play on your PlayStation 2. Central one player and two player start buttons give the control panel an authentic arcade feel. Provides an excellent foundation for very quick wiggling. Using the strong shafts of the Sumitsu LS32s give you fantastic gameplay feedback on your favourite shooters. They now follow some industry standard arcade stick testing. First off, the Sumitsu LS32s are subjected to one pound per square inch Newton force waggling motion. The same directional forces are then applied to the Dreamcast arcade stick, which moves approximately five millimeters in every direction before the micro switches are engaged. Finally, the Mayflash PC joystick moves a whole centimeter when subjected to the same force a vast inaccuracy in design. Oh, so let's stop the pain full stop. Oh, God. Oh. It's a nice small head, so oh. we should hopefully be able oh. to get this one out without too much oh. trouble. Oh, yeah. Can you bring me a pajama back as well? Oh, I need something. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So. Well, I can tell you that I spent a massive amount of time with my hand around my knob last night, gripping the shaft and uh, thrusting it left and right uh, to my favourite vertical shooting games. Um, there's enough fun here for two people. It's a whacking great panel. Uh, get your mates around, get your Sumitsus out and uh, thrust away the Virtuous Stick Pro, undeniably the finest two-player arcade periphery in the universe.